Welcome back to Marvel's Films. Today we have here a new competitor to the higher level segment of on-camera monitors called the OCTAH G7 3000 nits monitor. In this review we will go on a true film test and film scene with this actual monitor. A daylight full brightness test with two other monitors for reference. And an in-depth review with the built-in features of the OCTech G7. If you want to check out this monitor right now, you can find the first link in the description. And there will be also in the description some other monitor reviews that I made in the past, so if you are interested, you are free to check them out. As you know, before making a review, I am always taking in the field all the gear that I get to review. So I went out and test actually with my friend on a night scene filming with a music video and actually went out on a full day to test actually the brightness and compare it to other monitors and see what we can get. As you can understand, this monitor came in with a little higher price tag because it's aiming to another different type of filming scenarios and a more pro-end video user. And you will understand why in this review. So we are going first to the unboxing. The big difference when getting such a monitor is actually the packaging. The monitor came in in a true protective Herschel case with soft padding inside where you will get a whole bunch of accessories and stuff to start and get going. The OCTech G7 monitor, the big sunshade screen, the D-Tap D-Power cord cable, wall adapter with various sockets regions, small Hoshu mount, nicely designed magic arm, the battery plate adapter for the V-mount batteries. So if you are in the field for a long extensive time and you don't want to swap batteries all the time, a big V-Log battery could power this screen for more than 10 hours without any problems. Let's have a look into the outer shell and body. As I can notice after some test and filming with it, the build quality feels quite better than the less expensive competitors. It's still plastic, but I feel that it's really well built and I don't hear any sounds or squirks while holding it. On the back you will find NPF Sony battery slot, the DC in power wall socket the HDMI in and out port and the more professional level SDI in and out port for the high-end cameras that supports the SDI protocol. Yes, this is why this monitor costs a little bit more, because it has HDI in and out. You can get this same monitor without it and it will be a lot more cheaper and actually more affordable. A true switch on and off button placed on the upper back part that will allow you to switch completely the monitor off, not just a standby thing. On the front you will just find a 5-way joystick, nothing else. This is a new different way on using this monitor and you will get going really fast and you will adapt this joystick without any problems. This monitor is one of the brightest 7-inch monitors that you can actually get. It's 3000 nits in brightness, so we went outside to test it out straight at 11 am with the sun hitting the monitors that you use for reference. The desk view R7 with 1000 nits, the Fieldward LUT 7S with 2000 nits and the OCTech G7 with 3000 nits. Ok, so let's be honest, the G7 is the pricier of the three. The Desview R7 was kind of hard to use in these conditions and it's $239. The LUT 7S from Fieldward made a much better job with 2200 nits and the price is $370. And then the OCTech G7. It actually outshined the bot. So the actual $720 for this monitor is kind of reasonable with all the other accessories included. The OCTech G7 screen came in with two one quarter mounts, one on the top and one on the bottom. The Fieldward and the Desio competitors actually had also a side one quarter mount. The OCTech don't and I suppose this is the reason why they wanted to make it more sturdy and solid. But in this case I would love that they have included actually 
aside one quarter mount for an actual smaller tilt arm that you're getting so you can mount it on your gimbal straight away on the back side of my aircross too. Let's go to the menu setting. This monitor gives you the option to set up custom menus and tools on the main screen and add your most used ones like zebras, looks, aspect ratios, girt lines, focus assist and more. Ok, so let's go first to the monitor settings. You can control the volume of the built-in speaker or headphones attached, backlight power, display rotation, anamorphic stretch selector, DSLR scale, status display bar for the battery voltage and signal input and the calibration loot. The load loot file will give the option to load specified loots for your specified loot profile of your camera from the actual SD card slot but it came already packed with more than 30 camera specific loots from Blackmagic, RED, Fuji, DJI, Canon and the Sony S-Log. Most of the times you will not have to load anything, they are already included in the monitor. The screen is capable to save three specific tool settings panel for your dedicated filming scene and add for each panel your desired tools. Aspect ratios, safe markers, crosshatch, Leveler, well this kind of never seen in any monitor, great to know your horizontal line. False colors, zebras, waveforms, vector scopes, focus assist and peaking. Add your favorite look, put the audiometer visible or rescale the frame. Comparing it to the Fieldward Loot 7, this monitor is actually smaller with the same 7 inch screen and maybe due to the fact that the Fieldward monitor is also touch enabled. And I'm actually not a really big fan of touch screen monitors that I have to actually look at and nail the perfect focus, but when they work well, well I like to have a touch screen monitor. Sadly you don't get the touch screen feature on the OC Tech monitor, but the joystick navigation is generally good and really intuitive. So it's not a must have feature and it will make the whole screen more compact for a less power hungry screen. Every manufacturer goes along with a different design and actual port placement. But my favorite port placement for HDI and HDMI input and output is on the OC Tech. It's on the back and it will not go on the way when you are filming and actually mounting other accessories. The Field World has bottom place port. The desk view being only HDMI have side ports and if you are using the monitor in specific ways the port with cables attached might get in the way of other accessories or cameras while using. This is the best port placement for my needs. One thing that I miss in this monitor is the DC out pass through to power some other accessories just like a wireless emitter NISO system. It's not essential but it could have been included just like the Fieldward and the DESI monitor have this port so you can pass through to other devices the power from the battery. It's just my taste and how I like to rig up my monitor on a day of filming. So concluding, if you need a monitor for a full daylight shooting, this will be actually the perfect choice and it has the same 18 watt power consumption than the less powerful Fieldward Loot 7. So if you have any question, feel free to comment down below, I will be happy to answer them all. Until my next one, thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe with the bearing icon to get notified every time I make a new video and see you on my next one.